I'm live inside my group. Let me pull this up on my phone here. All right, my friends, where is my group? There I am. So we're going to do some tapping today. This is the tap into your soul, the live tapping experience for the month. And um, we have so many new members to welcome into the space. So first of all, just want to say hello to anyone that is joining us. I apologize for the time change. I was in a session and we ran over because we had some tech difficulties. The phone kept uh, hanging up. <laughs> so anyway, we're starting our live today a little bit late, my friends, but thanks for joining me. So I'll just give it a minute for people to hop on. We are going to be doing some tapping together. So there's other videos that are here in this space for you that teach you about um, the different ways that I do tapping. There's some different experiences already here for you. Uh, but I really want to jump in and, you know, I want to pick a topic, something that I have it coming to me, my intuition, something that is is not so obvious. You know, for example, some people say, let's do tapping on forgiveness or, you know, let's do tapping on bringing in more money or let, you know, and all of that is wonderful and it works. I like to tap on the things that are some of our uh, more hidden, deeper experiences, because for me, that's what has some of the most profound effects and results for us. This is one of the reasons we can do tapping and not have any result at all, is because we may not be tapping on the thing that is actually a source of a root for us, a root concern or issue. It might not have a, um, a core wound associated with it. So I, I work a lot with core wounds and core wounds are things like unworthiness, betrayal, rejection, humiliation, violation, you know, there, there's a lot of different core wounds that we have experienced, sometimes in multiples of, and I like to go deep in my experiences, because I, I really feel that makes all the difference in the work. If you're tapping on something, and it feels like you're doing affirmations, you're likely skimming over the surface of potential. Truly, you, you're you're missing the boat. <laughs> so if we tap on things saying, I am lovable, I am amazing, that's great. And that's that's wonderful. That's a step in the right direction. But that is not going to necessarily help you unwind what's really going on within the nervous system or integrate what it is you want to create for yourself. So I do like to pick things that are a little more edgy to work with, a little deeper, sometimes a little bit harder to look at. So I'm, I'm just kind of rambling a little here as I'm tuning in to what that's going to be. Um, it's coming to me. It's not here yet. It's almost here. But anyway, if you're able to see me right now, if you could just let me know you're here here to say hello, say hi. Let me know if everything is coming through okay for you here. Can you see me clearly? Hear everything okay? Are you nervous <laughs> about this topic that I might pick for us? Just curious. So let me also shut down this email here. One second, friends. I do not need background noise. Lindsay, hello. All right, let's quit that email and let's shut down alerts. There we go. So I will not be bothered during this time. All right. So tapping, I want to just say to you briefly, for those of you that are new, I use something I created called the intuitive tapping method. So this is traditional tapping, but it's mixed with hypnosis, NLP, which is called neuro, uh, neuro linguistic programming. And sometimes I use visualization. Sometimes I use different things in, in there. And there's a reason for that. We want to work the sub with the subconscious mind. Hey, Lori. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. And uh, we want to work with the subconscious mind because this is the part of us that we can access that has the ability. It's like software, right? It's programming, conditioning. This part of us holds the keys to why we repeat behaviors with software that we've sort of downloaded or implemented or, or sometimes have had impressioned upon us as well. When I talk about these things, I don't go into like shame or blame when it comes to our ancestors or family, because people are genuinely trying to do the best they can with what they have, right? Even if their best is horrible, <laughs> it's still a matter of being able to understand that there's things that we take on emotionally and energetically. There's things that we adapt to, that we absorb, especially if you're an empath, a feeler, someone that feels things very deeply. And um, all of these things affect us. So in our tapping today, um, I'm still kind of pulling forth the theme. Let me just hear a little bit if you're willing, if you're here, if you're live, and if you're willing, 
to share a little bit of like what's going on in your worlds. What are you guys experiencing? Let me get a little closer here. What are you aware of? What, what patterns are showing up for you? What things are repeating? What themes, if any? What's going on? I'm curious, I'm curious. You can share as much or as little as possible. We'll see if any, any brave souls decide to share because I know there's only a couple of people on right now. It's okay. You know, what, what repetitive themes are showing up? You know, I hear uncertainty. Um, I hear uh, intuition. Some of us are not sure what to do about certain decisions and feel some pressure around these decisions in the world today. Um, you know, and this isn't a political conversation and we're not going to get into COVID and all of that. We're not going to talk about those pieces, not because I don't care, but because I am not interested in um, owning a perception and then projecting that perception. I'm interested in having my own intuition and what works for me and honoring the intuition of other people. Thank you, Lindsay. She said resentment. Absolutely. Absolutely. I literally just had two different phone calls earlier and the word resentment came up a couple times in those sessions. So interesting. Okay. Let me sit with that. So resentment might be one of our themes for today. So now here's the flip side and we'll see if any other, any other things bubble up for you guys as you're sharing. What would, what would expansion feel like? So what are we looking to create in our lives? You know, when it comes to manifestation, when it comes to um, desire, intention, what do we want to call in? What is it that we want to call into our lives? Some people are, are working on their businesses, some people, their mindset, uh, some people is trying to be more optimistic and positive in the while facing different experiences. What do we want to cultivate? So that's a question that I'm hearing. I'm curious. And we'll see if any answers pop up. So we're going to do some tapping. And I, I just kind of went into a little bit of why it can not work for some people. And, and it might be that we're just not going deep enough. We're not saying the right things or the right words. So while I do this, I'm going to guide you. I'm going to guide you through the process. This is not going to be a long process. Um, we're going to go for a little bit, maybe 20 minutes or so. And basically, we're we're going to open to having some kind of a shift or a change. Now, if I say something and it doesn't work for you, change the words. It's important when we do tapping that you change the words. It can't hurt you in any way, but it just won't be effective if we're not saying things or responding to things that just don't feel genuine to us. This is why when we do a script, it's not as powerful or as impactful as it can be if we are listening to the intuition of our own body, right? Or mind consciousness. So in, in, in traditional tapping, there's a script that you follow and it usually has things in it like, even though I feel this way, I love myself deeply and completely. I've heard that a million times. That was part of my original tapping training that I had done years ago. And I never resonated with that because it felt like such a divide. It felt like such a jump from where somebody was and what they were feeling into this land of impossibility. <laughs> and I'm like, how can this be helping? Now I understand subconsciously, the subconscious is always listening. I understand that we're, we're opening to receive. So yes, saying positive things is, is healthy and it can work. But what I also know is underneath that, if we have deeply embedded beliefs of self, we will just like affirmations on sticky notes all over your home, right? It, it has an effect for sure, but how often do we reject that or ignore it or, or, or just not connect with it too because it isn't really representing what's going on. So I just wanna say that when we do this tapping, one of the main concerns that people have is that they fear that by tapping on things, they're gonna create it. So when we're focusing on the negative, negative, the not so good feeling stuff, we're not creating it, we're liberating it from the nervous system. This is why if it doesn't resonate with you, it doesn't resonate with you. This is why if I say something, if I say anger and you're like, I don't have that, but I do feel this, that's what brings it to life. You're honoring what's going on underneath the surface versus saying what you think you have to say to fit into this world. And you're giving yourself the opportunity to let it up. Um, so tapping and ranting is one of my favorite things to do and it works really well. And it's helped me to move mountains in my life in, in so many different ways. Couple comments. All right, Lori, she said, I'm working so much on my business. I wanna create a better balance with home, work and myself. Excellent. Hey Jen, nice to see you. Excellent. Okay. So balance, we've got resentment, we've got different themes popping up. 
different themes. What comes to me, exchange, people working on exchange, energy, time, balance. Um, how about, I've already done some tapping for overwhelm. Trust, Lindsay said, yes, trust is a good one. Oh, trust, trust like is always something to, to, to work with, I feel like. Let's go with a combination. Here's what's coming to me of trusting self to trust the universe because it starts here. If we trust in here, we tend to trust out here as well. And the world, you know, the world around us, the people around us, the divinity within and around, it really starts from within. So I'm feeling trust is, is actually probably a good one to work with. Hold on, my friends, as well as who am I to thrive? Who am I to thrive, right? When the world's a little wonky and crazy, when there's so much fear, worry, stress, anxiety, um, discontent, uncertainty keeps coming up. Yeah, who am I to thrive in that? So I feel like we can move and, and trust. So I feel like we can build these together. Let me see your comments here. <laughs> Jen, okay. So Jen, you literally just anxiety, worry, fear, trust. Well, there's that. So there's your actual words of exactly what I was just saying. Um, yes, 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 yes. So I feel like that's a great combination. And then so if you're watching and you have a different word that fits in, you can absolutely use that. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, I'm going to take off these glasses so that it makes it a little bit easier to do the tapping. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to start, you pick either hand to work with, and I want you to pick an intention. Okay. So trust is an intention, moving some of the un, uh, uh, underlying emotions that you may be experiencing, feelings, sensations. I want you to think about this. Okay. On a scale of zero to 10, Zero means no issue, no resistance whatsoever. 10 means it's very intense. So if you're going with trust, if you're measuring what we're talking about on trust, zero can mean completely trusting, no issue there. 10 can mean it's really difficult, really hard, tons of resistance, maybe some trauma, some different things going on that are, that are keeping you at a high level 10, all right? Now, if it's not trust, but emotion, and so anger or anxiety, worry, fear, all of those pieces, same thing. Zero means they're not really present in my nervous system right now. I don't really feel any of that in my body. I don't really have any thoughts reflecting that cycle. I'm a zero. 10, uh, fear, terror, anxiety. It's relentless, lots of resistance, hard to calm the mind. And this is an individual process, okay? So your 10 may feel very different than somebody else's 10. This is why it's for you to measure. So I want you to just take a minute on a scale of zero to 10 and tune into that and just pause to sit with that number, all right? When we're done, I'm gonna ask you to share the number, but right now you don't have to. Just give it in a minute so you can write it down or just memorize your number for just a moment. Okay, I'm just checking comments. All right, so here we go. Let's jump into this. So I do this very intuitively. This is how this process works for me. I'm good at reading people. I can re read a group of people. And so I, I basically am reading with my intuition right now. And this includes people that step into this experience in the future. So let's, we're going to move, we're going to work with, with trust. We're going to work with who am I to thrive, right? That kind of energy. Energy. Um, because a lot of us feel guilt or shame when we're doing well, when the rest of the world feels a little wonky or chaotic. And so it's really, really important. And then any of the anxiety, the worry, the fear, stress that comes with that, um, any other emotions that might come with that. Okay. So pick a hand to work with. And I want you to start tapping on the back of your hand. I want you to breathe. If you're choosing trust to work with, um, I want you to think about the way that this affects you, the, the inability to trust, the distrust, the examples you have of why it's so difficult, right? The stories of the mind. Just notice, feel into your body if you're able to. Sometimes there's sensation, emotion. Sometimes there's not. Just tapping on the back of your hand, okay? We're just getting started, my friends. I know people are hopping on. So just tapping on the back of your hand, I want you to just give yourself permission to feel and to breathe. That's it. So close your eyes for just a moment here while you tap. Okay. So now we're going to start moving through the points at your own pace. Just follow along with me. 
and change out the words if it doesn't resonate, if it doesn't connect with you. Okay, here we go. Repeat after me. Sometimes it's really hard for me to trust. Especially when I don't know what the outcome's going to be. I have a tendency to want to control it. I have a tendency to avoid the discomfort, which makes it harder to trust other people and myself, the universe, the master plan. I want to trust, but I don't always know how to do that. It feels really, really vulnerable to do that. What if something happens? What if it doesn't work for me? What if I trust and I fail? What if I trust the wrong people? What if I trust the plan and it's not for me? What if, what if I invest my time and energy and it doesn't work? Then what? Why do I protect myself in this way? I wonder why it's so difficult for me to trust. Process of life, other people, universe, a part of me knows it's possible. I see people doing it all the time. I want to be able to trust that much. I wish I could just let go a little more. I wonder if I'm willing to let go just a little more. What would that feel like in my body if I just let go? I wonder what would happen if I released my thoughts just a little more. If I gave myself permission to drop the control and to move into my heart. I wonder what that could feel like. I give myself permission to do this now, to access my inner wisdom, to feel safe enough to trust and let go. I give myself permission to do this. Now breathe. Just breathe while you tap. And then when you're ready, repeat after me again. I'm willing to trust more. I'm willing to see more evidence of the universe supporting me. I'm willing to feel safer in my body and more relaxed in this world to honor my intuition but not my impulses. I'm willing to discern my intuition from my impulses so that I can trust myself to make the right decisions, to open to receive so that I may thrive regardless of the worldly conditions. 
if I thrive, I can help others even more. If I allow myself to receive more blessings, I can share them. That feels better. I'm willing to see more evidence in the world around me of these changes, of these intentions. I'm willing to trust this process one step at a time, one decision at a time. I'm willing to see how good it can get. I'm so willing for the universe to show me how aligned I am with my intentions, helping me expand in the most beautiful and graceful of ways. That feels so much better. I will ask my higher power to protect me so that I liberate my mind to help me consciously create what I want. I can start to trust that. That feels better. That feels more expansive. I trust the expansiveness of this. I'm willing to witness more blessings in my life. I'm willing to create more positive experiences of trusting, thriving, feeling like I'm more than enough. Allowing this universe to deliver more than enough through my experiences, reflecting this in my thoughts, in my feelings and behaviors, in my attitude, in my intuition. I'm willing to trust in new ways. I give myself permission to explore this and to let it feel easy and joyful and fun. All right, my friends, pause here, close your eyes for just a moment. Now I want you to go into your body. Now ask yourself on that scale of zero to 10, what is your number now? Same intention you used before. Was it trust or something else? Take note of your number. When you're ready, open your eyes. And if you're willing to share with me, what are you feeling and what was your before number and your after number? Sometimes there's a buzzing. Sometimes there is a sense of relief. Sometimes there's just a calm stillness or peace or ease. Sometimes there's agitation <laughs> because you're actually on a nerve and you're closer to actually moving some things than you might have been aware of. Sometimes there's nothing at all and that's okay. Every now and then the number moves. Every now and then the number stays the same. Every now and then the number can get worse because we're really starting to move some energy. Um, it can go down, it can go up and can stay the same, but just pay attention to the sensory uh, experience of what you're feeling, okay? Awesome. Lindsay said, before I was a 10, now I'm a zero. That's beautiful, beautiful. Jen, I feel calmer. I was an eight, now I'm about a 5.5. Now here's the amazing thing, friends. So we only did just a few moments of this, right? It may be 10, 12 minutes of this, um, if that, I'm not timing <laughs> because I was I was going through the, the action of it. And imagine what would happen 
if you were to do 30 minutes of this with a very specific intention and giving yourself permission to really purge any emotion or disbelief or fear, it's amazing. It's amazing what shifts and what transforms. So that's a beautiful thing, a gift you just gave yourself that you just gave your nervous system also. Excellent, beautiful. Oh, I love it. Amber, feeling tingles buzzing all over. Easier to breathe, shoulders less tense, and more freedom. Started at a seven, now a three. I've seen lots of purple colors swirling around when my eyes were closed. I love it. Yes, and you can practice this. You can use all different intentions with it. Sometimes the hardest thing is honestly giving ourselves permission to feel and to experience whatever it is that we want to experience. In the last week and a half, a lot of my client sessions have revolved around releasing resentment and working on releasing the guilt and, and shame that they feel of having successes happen for them. Good things happen, beautiful things showing up. Guilt and shame about the choices they feel pressured to make because of the world today and all the different things that are going on. And it was just this beautiful reminder to come home to what can you do to give yourself permission to be, you know, what is the right decision for you that may not look like the same decision for someone else. And, it, and, and it's not about a specific topic. It's life in general, your choices, your decisions, the way you think, the way you feel, the way you dress, the way you show up in the world is not for everyone. But what matters is, are you giving yourself permission to be the fullest expression of whatever that is, you know, as a work in progress, I like to say always, <laughs> always a work in progress. Amber, permission part is where I felt the, the shift big time. Yes. So that's something I build into these tapping sessions. So a lot of times I'll say things like I give myself permission to, and you know, people with questions say, well, why do I have to do that? I feel like I've given myself permission. And maybe you have, but sometimes we unconsciously are seeking permission from an authority figure an adult in our lives, here or gone, uh, they don't even have to be present. They don't even have to be alive anymore. But there, there can be a, a different part of us that still seeks that approval. And so by tapping and giving yourself permission, you're just kind of covering that base just in case you need it. So think of it that way. So it's not that we need permission, but sometimes on a deeper level, there is a part of us seeking it, even though we don't want to think that we need it. Or, and, and some of us are waiting to be given that before we make a move, take a step, feel better, make a different decision, leave an experience, start an experience, whatever it might be. Absolutely, my friends. Okay, so I hope this has served you today. Let me know. Just love, I would love to know, is this helpful? Do you enjoy this process? Do you want more of these kind of things? So this is the tap into the soul group. And so this is one of the main things I really wanted to start um, bringing more of in here. Plus it's tapping Tuesday. So this is going to go on YouTube in a few moments, well, a little later today, I'm going to edit this and, and put it on YouTube. And, uh, you know, just to be able to create a shift, you know, sometimes I do like a 30 minute or 45 minute hour long experience, but sometimes we just need a, a quick, like get in there, reorient, find our true North and move forward. And that's what I like about these two. So I'm thinking about doing some shorter ones as well, where it's just a quick, like, let's jump on in and see what we can, what, what we can create. Lindsay. Yes. Very helpful. Awesome. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. All right, my friends. Well, not very long on here today, but just enough to do a little tune up for us. <laughs> and like I said, I'm going to edit this and then we'll put it on YouTube as well. And so I'm going to pop my YouTube channel in here for you guys eventually, because it is something that's building. We're building more videos and putting things on there. Um, so that way there's other tapping tracks and things like that, that you can also find. So you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for being here. And um, yeah, if you feel like this could help someone or, or serve them in some way, feel free to invite them into this group, or you're welcome to share the YouTube link when I have it out for you guys a little bit later and enjoy the rest of your day. I'll talk to you all soon. Have fun today.